This is part two of the video about MakeScan, a tiny development board with an AI accelerator. We're going to connect the board to the IDE, run an example code with pre-trained model, train our own model and convert it to be run on device with NPU acceleration and test the peripherals. Without further ado, first things first, let's download and install Makes Vision IDE. It looks very similar to OpenMV IDE, perhaps it was forked or inspired by it. Currently it's version 1.1.0, it's uh, very basic in its functions. We can see that, well, there's obviously connection with the board, there are some examples here that we can browse later. There are links where you can, for example, generate a Wi-Fi QR code, there is a modal converter, April tag generator, and so on and so forth. There are links to documentation right here. There are two ways to connect the board to the ID, Wi-Fi or with the cable. In documentation, as you can see, I strongly recommend the Wi-Fi methods because there can be less driver trouble on different systems. For wireless connection, both the board and computer need to be on the same network. I was expecting entering the password on the board to be a complete cluster. But I was pleasantly surprised by how sensitive the touchscreen was. Okay, one way or another we are connected. I'm using the wired connection here. Let's run some examples. Let's go to Vision, AI Classify, Neural Network Classifier, and start running. Okay, here we go. Here's the computer keyboards. Envelope. It's a notebook. What is this? Printer. <laughs> okay, so let's do another one. We're trying both classification and detection. And if you're a bit confused which one is which, what is the difference between them, I link my slightly older video, which explains the difference and gives an example with a K to 10 board. Okay, now let's try the detection algorithm. This is awesome and pre-trained YOLA V5 included with the firmware can detect 80 different classes of objects. It might be enough for some applications, but inevitably there are going to be people who want to detect or recognize something different. You can train preset architectures on Makes Hub or go complete DIY. MakeScam is based on SoftGo, a G2002 chip and TPU MLIR used for model conversion. Okay, that was a lot, let me unpack it. TPU is the tensor processing unit, and in this case, it means pretty much the same thing as MPU or neural processing unit. Just a part of the chip specifically made to process certain operations like matrix multiplication faster. MLIR is a multi-level intermediate representation. I need a whole video to explain you what it is, so grossly oversimplifying, it is a compiler framework Using it, we can take the stuff in one form, in this case, a neural network graph as a TF light or on an X file, and transform it into something that the neural processing unit would understand. Where to get the model? In this case, it's not really that important. You can write your own training code with PyTorch or TensorFlow. You can use one of the pre-made frameworks like Ultralytics or you can train an Edge Impulse Studio. For the purpose of this video, I trained a simple face detection YOLO V5 model in Edge Impulse. It's really easy and takes about half an hour. In the end, we have our train model in on an X format, which is exactly what we need. So the model conversion process, git clone the GitHub repository I prepared for you based on a Chinese blog with some modifications. All right, now let's build the Docker container. Then we're going to launch it and mount the current folder inside the Docker container. The model conversion process consists of three steps. There is model transformation, there is quantization calibration, and the final deployment. You'll download your model and you'll need to open it in a Netron app. Check the names of the outputs of three branches in uh, YOLA before the post processing. So you'll need these names to paste them into the model transform command. I wrote a small blog post on Patreon 
why you need to cut the model, like do some so-called model surgery here. It's a public post, you so go ahead and read it. So now we have that name here. By the way, it's a slightly different name for each one of the branches. All right, so you will need to put the names of the outputs of the three branches for your network here. After the model transform, you'll need to execute the run calibration step with some images from your data set. About 100 is enough. They do not need to be labeled, but they do need to be somewhat representative of the data that your model will see during the inference. In very simple words, if you train the model to detect the rabbits, for example, do not use the pictures of raccoons to calibrate it. Finally, run the model deploy command. All right, so as an output, you get CVI model file right here. It's a binary file, so we cannot see its content. And uh, you'll need to modify the model description file by yourself. Just use the example I provided in my repository. For me, the values are all correct already, but you might need to change the labels and the anchors, which you can get from YOLA output. Okay, so now we will want to copy the model with the model description to the board. We're going to slightly modify the example code to just simply change the model description name. And voila. Now, when we have the model, how to make something useful with it? We can connect other boards, actuators, and some LEDs that will go blink blink to MakeScam using GPIO pins. Unfortunately, I would say MakeScam is not particularly GPIO friendly. You'll have to take apart the case if you have the version with the screen and solder the pins yourself. And only a few pin headers are provided with the board. It's only a minor annoyance, but something that I'd recommend Cypid to tweak nevertheless. After pins are soldiered, we can add UART output and some GPIO control. Everything works as expected here. I left some examples in GitHub repository, you feel free to have a look. So, how is this board? On the plus side, I like the ease of use with the ID and everything, and the whole model conversion process was a piece of cake. Compared to some other NPUs I had to work with. I genuinely expected something to go wrong somewhere, but I was able to convert a third-party generated model in about one hour. ID, connection and onboard software, they all seem to be good to go, even despite the board was launched relatively recently, like months ago or something. The documentation on peripherals is lacking. It's a very bare-bone API description without any examples. That's an area where SciPit should fill in the blanks. Same can be said about the peripheral connection in general. They had some great, easy to connect the boards before, for example, the Max Amigo, which was a beautiful, ready to go K to 10 board in a plastic case. So I'm sure they can make it easier to connect sensors and actuators to Lychee RV Nano as well. Overall, the board is a good starting point for experiments with the computer vision applications. For a similar price with Raspberry Pi, you can get much more compute power for neural networks and still have a nice and cozy development environment. Sometimes you need the boards even tinier than this. To learn more about exciting world of tiny machine learning, have a look at the tiny ML course playlist here.